hallelujah amen so today let's look at his ministry in our daily lives what does he do in our life on a daily basis if you look at the bible there are some scriptures that show us his ministry in our daily life john chapter 14 verse 16 john chapter 14 verse 26 john chapter 15 verse 26 just write this down you can go study them and acts chapter 9 verse 31 John chapter 14 verse 16 John 14 26 John 15 26 John 16 verse 7 and Acts chapter 9 verse 31 so the ministry in our daily life I also call this the ministry of the comforter there are eight major components of this ministry the ministry of the comforter let's look at John chapter 14 verse 16 John chapter 14 verse 16 he said and I will pray the father and he will give you another comforter the word another comforter is the word Alos Paracletos Jesus had been with them Jesus had guided them for three and a half years and he said I'm about to go now but you don't need to feel bad I'm going to send you another like myself so I'll say Alos Paracletos that is another word comforter another like myself the only difference would be that this one will not have a physical body like i had a physical body and because he doesn't have a physical body he can be with you everywhere at every time because jesus was limited by his physical body but the holy spirit is not limited is somebody hear what i'm saying the holy spirit is not what is not limited that's why he can be with all of us at the same time because he's omnipresent so i'll say omnipresent is present at all places at the same what at the same time if you're here say i'm here so the first ministry is a ministry of the comforter there are at least about eight things in this stuff and if you could put up the amplified version you will see a breakdown of this eight ministries eight things he does in our lives as a comforter can you give us the amplified of this john chapter 14 verse 16 please very fast and i will send you and i'll ask the father and he will give you another comforter can we read it together another word comforter what's the next thing counselor what's the next thing helper what's the next thing intercessor what's the next thing advocate what's the next thing strengthener what's the next thing stand by that he may what remain with you forever so this is god sent to be with you what forever through the thick and thin in the mountain in the valley he will always be there to help you and everybody said amen the first thing he is a comforter he's there to comfort you when you go through things go through pains you know sometimes when people lose their parents someone will say i know how you feel you don't know how they feel even if you've lost your father your father is not their father you know there's people that lose, lose their father they are very happy father i thank you that bully has gone forever i can have peace now so they are crying it's not real christ crocodile tears they are thanking god for deliverance but there are people that have a relationship with their father are you getting what i'm saying is somebody hearing what i'm saying you may lose a friend and somebody say no 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 I, I was watching this weekend i was so shaking up i know uh, some of you in the banking sector may have your own opinion about the man but i was watching the the stuff the what do you call it now the memorial service and all the, the the service of songs and all those for Herbert Wigwe and I was shocked at how full grown men were crying crying uncontrollably because of one man that has touched their lives I watched as almighty Sanusi was crying uncontrollably I know it's a taboo for an emir to cry so they will come sometimes and cover the screen you know the way the traditional they will cover so we will not see the emir crying they will go down again he will start crying again almost three or almost four people were coming at different times to comfort him because he has lost his very close words friend 
who was with him that's how you know a friend though when there's trouble eh? the bible say a brother how do you put it again if there's a friend that's ticket closer than what a brother they are friends like that another one said that a brother is born for the day of what adversity that's when you know whether you have a friend the day of trouble many people in the day of trouble will abandon you and go their way but who will stay with you? he told the story of you know the different times he had challenges especially when he was deposed as an emir which is something that i've never seen in my lifetime but history with it has happened before it was so embarrassing but somebody was there he said the night before he knew it would happen he had already sensed it at the beginning of the year where the thing was going to go he said the night before he has already gotten intel he called his friend Herbert and said he said by tomorrow I'll be removed as Emir I don't know what to do I don't know where to go but I think I would like to go to Lagos and what did his friend tell him he said by tomorrow there will be a jet waiting for you to leave Kano because you don't know what is going to happen and he said he was removed around either 9 or 10 a.m. by 12 noon there was a jet on the tarmac waiting for him to move to Lagos that's how he evacuated his whole family and as they were landing Lagos the guy was lodging them in a hotel and they stayed in that hotel the same day he found accommodation for them one friend and that's where they've been living for the past how many years wow I was touched and he wasn't the only one I watched them go take home and cry like a baby and he kept calling him my mentor uh, my mentee brother I don't know how your mentee becomes your brother my mentee friend brother and, and I, I saw that thing Jesus said towards the end of his time he said I no longer call you guys what friends because a friend doesn't know what master is doing you are now my brothers and those of us that are mentoring people are training that must be your drive that these people you are mentoring someday they can stand with you i get to what i'm saying not terrorizing them killing them and you know we need to rise up real friendship and brotherhood needs to come back to the body of christ let's stop being selfish and self-centered is somebody hear what i'm saying let's look out for one another let's be there for one another in church your closest brother your, your brother in christ is meant to be closer than your physical brother is somebody hearing what i'm saying yes a friend that's ticket closer than a brother is your brother in christ that's how your brother in christ should be is somebody hearing what i'm saying is somebody hearing what i'm saying you know the bible says, love one another and by this you shall prove to be my what my disciples Thank God for power, thank God for many things. But one thing that shows people you are the disciple of Christ is how you want love one. Let's love one another in this church. Let's love one another in the body of Christ. Let's learn to go out of our way. He said another thing that pained him was that some time ago he was sensing there will be issues. So he carried all his money, put in his savings in a trust for his children's education, and he put Herbert in charge of it. His mind was that he would die before him, but he said because he's a, he's a troublemaker. Anytime, nobody, one president might decide to kill him. But his pain was now that the guardian now left before him. The guy could not hold him, he was crying uncontrollably. You know, this is the very first burial I'm seeing people, Muslims, in the church with their turban. There was nothing, it was not a religious ceremony. Everybody came, both Christian and Muslim, they were in that place. You can think all you wish. I, I've not seen it before. I've not seen an Emir with Toban inside church service. I've not seen it before. I've not seen it before. They were there in the service of stone. They were there in the burial. I was asking somebody, if you are looking for one Nigeria, see one Nigeria. There's a place where it is. It's a place of love. Someone say a place of love. And that's the nation we're looking for. That's the church we're looking for. I know for you guys professional you might have all your ideas but there was something somebody said he said people know about the banker he said but when he died one of his friends said 
by tomorrow they will find out Herbert the human being that this man was a human being that loved people now I don't know everything about him but this one I've heard is what emulating I hear what I'm saying hello hello what would they say at your burial you know many burials we lie a lot Sanusi said it many burials we are forced to lie he said but he listened to all the people that gave tributes they were all true because these are lives that were touched by this man a man that took the building project of a church on his own created opportunities made loans available and when the church defaulted on the loan he took his own personal money and put in what kind of man is that I know some of you are you're anointing in our watch and Holy Spirit again a fair fair but sometimes you know the heaven will surprise a lot of us do you hear what I said heaven will what heaven will supply will surprise a lot of us because God doesn't judge the way we what we judge heaven is the is 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 the one of us that preach about God's call card God's marking scheme is different from our marking scheme hallelujah so the holy spirit is a true comforter he can wipe away your tears too. he's the only one that can comfort those guys who, nobody can comfort them so when you are going through pain you are going through challenges he's the one that can comfort you i don't know about you i've been in trouble oh i've been in trouble i, I remember a time in my life i wanted to commit suicide when i had a challenge with it with an exam by the time the holy spirit finished with me i was ashamed of myself he asked me a question he said when i said lord lord kill me kill me now everybody knows because when i went to pray in the bush coming back we are discussing my score they don't know me see that cost trip he failed and they don't know the cost trip i passed them on the road i said Chineke. people that don't know me are discussing my score discussing my exam by the time i got to the college block all my classmates surrounded me they were weeping so I never, I never actually saw the exam results. They told me the exam results. I never saw it. They said, you don't need to go there. Just turn back. And they took me to my room. I just entered there and said, Lord, kill me, kill me now. My life is not worth it again. So the Holy Spirit just started laughing. He said, I'm talking something serious. I'm laughing. Someone say he's a friend. He's a real friend. He lives in you. Learn to talk with him. He says, so if you die now, what do you say killed you? I have not actually talked about it. Yes. He said, the answer is it. An exam. Because of an exam, all my children, healing evangelist, prophet, teacher, all the things. You died. And you committed suicide. You are going to hell. Exam. He said, that exam in one hour then you now created expenses for your parents to look for money to bury you say are you not ashamed of yourself i was meant to be crying i started apologizing for this stupid decision immediately i left my room moved to the next room because every other person was coming for condolence i moved to the next room i didn't want to see anybody again you don't need that condolence to another room they didn't know where i was and in the night i and my best friend were back in class reading we were back in class there were other people that nearly called in fact by the next week i was down the one trying to stop people from committing suicide many good exams are terrible there was a guy one bad guy his own he came saw his result collected gun and chased everybody that's how they told him the exam result toys and shotgun everywhere to tell you how devastating this thing can be one sentence i was back in the class that night reading by the next week i was back in class sitting in the front of the seats in a junior class and when the lecturer looked at me he said i have never seen this before how are you able to do this i said you have no idea there's somebody inside me he's called 
called the comforter. Someone say the comforter. He can eliminate the pain in your life and redefine it. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? Oh 
come into your presence I am there is something that makes me come into your presence my helper my helper stop what? No, 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 you didn't hear. Married men, don't stop what? Ladies, am I right? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of the ladies said, I don't care about his money. You should not tell me something. Every time money, money, I'm like, you're shocked. You don't care about the money. But do you know it's a reality? That's what you see. To some of these ladies, they will be marrying a very wealthy man. He will be supplying the money. They can get one small boy to be servicing them that has what? Nothing. The only thing is that he makes them laugh. He makes them feel like a woman. You, you talk to them, they feel like slaves. They feel useless. Catch you. Can't give common advice. Net pancake, net pancake, net pancake. Can advise somebody. Watch how you're the carrot. One or 
that person in the office will come and see Eva, what is the problem? No, 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 stop from me. Oh, you are beautiful. Did you actually look at yourself in the mirror? What can it That's why, ladies, be careful who you are listening to. Especially when your husband is back on, be careful. Because that's how the devil comes. Your husband is back on, snake will enter the garden. Close your ears. Then talk to your man. Stop talking to me like this. Talk to me with fire. Fire. Hello, somebody. Come to the married school, okay? Come to couples classic. You learn more. Man, soon you do not be. That I could know how to enjoy your marriage. And everybody see the man. Come to matters of the heart. Let's teach you how to marry. Stop speaking English. Things are not as hard as you think. If you are here, say I'm here. Oh. He is your helper. Tell your neighbor he's your helper. Oh, wow. <laughs> God will help us today. Intercessor, he's your intercessor. He prays for you. He prays through you. He prays for you. He prays through you. The Bible says he's able to save to the uttermost. The Bible says he makes intercession for us with groans that are too deep to water. That's why if you only pray in your understanding, your prayer life is limited. You must get to that point where you allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you. And that's what happens when you pray in tongues. I hear what I'm saying. So your prayer should have a part that you pray in your understanding and a part that you pray in tongues. Did somebody hear what I'm saying? When you pray in tongues, the Bible says that we know not how to pray as we ought. Come from Romans chapter 8, what the Holy Spirit prays with us according to the will of God. The word is Sulam anti Lambanoma. He holds with us against your position. Is somebody hearing me? If you're hearing me, Sam, so hearing you. He is our intercessor. You can see what our brother said. He can pray long now. Why? He is now flowing with the Holy Spirit. Now he can pray. He can pray and go. But the other time he was on his own. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Number five is your companion. He is there to keep you company. To be with you in the darkest moment when everybody's gone. Always know that you are not alone. Tell your neighbor, I'm not alone. He is with me. Remember the Bible says he will abide with you for how long? For how long? He's the greatest companion. You see, I'm not afraid no matter where I go. That sent me is with me. He never left me. What? Hello. He's our companion. Number six is our advocate. He stands for us in the courts of heaven. He defends us. And even on earth, he defends us against opposition. He defends us against accusation. He is our advocate. Number seven, he is our strengthener. Oh, I know this one very well. Many times when I'm weak, yet he is what? Strong. My wife says, anytime I say I don't have a sermon, that's the one she's scared of. Because she knows that service will not end that day. Because if I say I don't know what to preach, then I will preach long. Because once I switch over to the Holy Spirit, the message, and I just say, ah, ah, ah. Many times I come into services weak. You know sometimes the services I come weak. Eh? And the most amazing services I've had. Because when he takes over, weakness disappears. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? Tell your neighbor he's your strength now. He can strengthen you to fulfill all the plans you have for your life. Ask him to help you. Ask him to strengthen you. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10, chapter 4 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who what? Strengthens me. He infuses inner strength with you. So he can strengthen you. Tell everybody he can strengthen you to do everything he has called you to do. Number number eight, he is your standby. What is standby? The standby generator is when the main one goes down. This one comes on, is it not? So when your strength is gone, his strength is just starting. When your wisdom is gone down, his wisdom just comes on. So partner with him. He's the best standby you can ever have. When you don't know what to do again, that's when light arises for you. The Bible 
Bible says, light arises for us in, for the righteous man in the midst of darkness. I know there's a lot of darkness in the economy now, but if you will fellowship with the Holy Spirit, light will arise for you. Tell your neighbor, light is arising for you in the midst of this darkness. Say it a second time, light is arising for you in the midst of this darkness. Say it a third time, light is arising for you in the midst of what is what is light direction illumination and direction hallelujah the other dimension of the ministry of the holy spirit in our lives we see them and oh my god okay i'll just list them for you then you can go back and study he's our truth revealer in John chapter 14 verse 17 and John 15 verse 26 the Bible says he will reveal all truth to us in John 14 17 and John 15 26 he will reveal all truth the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive or welcome take on no give me King James I need to be fast even the spirit of truth talking about the Holy Spirit whom the world cannot what receive now you can't receive the Holy Spirit if you're not born again is the spirit of christ how do you receive it by asking jesus to come into your life when jesus comes the holy spirit comes is somebody hear what i'm saying that's the first step when the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but you know him because he dwelleth with you and he shall be in you so jesus was talking to them when they were not yet born again when they were not filled with the holy spirit he said he's around you he's been walking with you but he will be you but if you are born again and he's in you someone say he's in me and his job is to reveal truth to you so even when people come and lie his job is to reveal truth to you his job is to open the word of god the truth of god's word for you to understand his job is to clear every lie so you can see the truth in every situation if you allow him you cannot make a mistake in marriage you can't marry the wrong person you can't have the wrong business deal i hear what i'm saying he will unveil the truth for you he will unveil the truth for you i remember you know i was in a particular conference yesterday online and they were talking to me about i was talking to them about prayer and being you know fixing a time and they were now like what if you fix a time and it doesn't happen i said sometimes it means god doesn't want it and i now told them a story my own story and when i was trusting god for marriage i was fixing targets by december i will see her december 17 and december 17, i'll see somebody the devil is a bad devil that's why he must know what you want and when i want to take the step the holy spirit said don't move he said but she's a nice sister she's speaking in tongues she said, well, one was even prophesying to me in fact she she used prophecy to tell me the kind of man that um, needs to marry you know, the kind of woman i need to marry when i evaluated the prophecy she just described herself the prophets so, so i said lord i prophesy good thing is it not easier than going to chai and the holy spirit said if you move i'll break your leg because i have a covenant with him don't allow me to make a mistake instead break my leg say this one i will break your leg then he said just wait just give her some time you'll see something and what i saw the next one week i i saw way more the real character just the man awara, awara. Awara has a skin they remove it the real character manifested as a child now where for fall inside if you see this pit the everlasting pit So you see, you see, in, in marriage, you know, we teach you all the principles, eh? But in, don't take the principles and forget the principle. Did you hear what I said? God is the principle. So I say, God is the principle. So with your 17 secrets to choosing a life partner, follow the spirit. So I say, follow the spirit. As I always tell people, have you prayed? They say, every time, prayer, 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 prayer. I pray, I pray. one chance uh, we've seen crazy stuff crazy stuff deception one of my daughters a guy came from Obudo Ibo to marry her and she was you know she was so on fire one of fire and now I know you have a wrong relationship it affects your life you are not painting before 
before you start painting and masquerading. I know that somebody wrong has come. You are committed in church, you start skipping church. Let me tell you something, any relationship that turns you away from God is not in you. What? You used to give before you stop giving. You used to pray, you stop praying. I know that the serpent has entered your garden. So she started painting. Hey, if you this paint, as if all and then they ask competition. Then this one that doesn't wear trousers, she's always modest. Who are saying these hot hot things? This is a can What's happening? There are one, there are one. Where one guy fell down. Thank God for I've been trained as a mentor. One day I called and said, This is a relationship. I don't think it's okay. I've not heard anything from God, but I'm watching. By their foot, you shall what? I said, There's something wrong. I told her, I said, That guy is lying to you.
like he taught me okra soup ebusi soup he can teach you medicine like he taught me he can teach you engineering he can teach you ministry there are things we do and people wonder how do you get this stuff we have been taught by god ask him to come and teach you is somebody hearing me hello is somebody hearing me he can teach you what all things look at it and the comforter which is the holy spirit john 14 20 whom the father will send in my name he will teach you some things he will teach you what all things praise the lord he's your reminder is there the be he said he will bring to your remembrance all things so you're a student the holy spirit can remind you everything you have studied just ask him to is somebody hearing what i'm saying and there are many ways he does it he will show you memory systems for me he showed me memory systems charts pictures i summarize things in pictures it's the holy spirit that taught me that i can't cram like some of you i want guy in school he can cram and when he's cramming don't touch his chair it will evaporate just he can cram a whole book and point like that then the guy yeah. but when he's cramming don't touch his chair if you kick his chair to evaporate he will fight you see now which kind of learning is this one but the holy spirit helps me my own is charts god has your own memory system tell them but god has your memory system for some of you is mnemonic some of you is charts some of you is summaries stop looking in sokoto for what is your shokoto you're a student there's a best way you read and understand some of you can do night crawling some of you are not designed for the night you will fail a good child a bahayana hall or white boy in a nine and sit in go spider but there are people i know they will do tdb and they'll go from there inside the exam or pour the whole thing because if once they close their eyes to wipe but there are some when you finish staying at wiki base in general core ask the holy spirit to show you what works for you <laughs> somebody say amen he's our guide he is our reminder he is the testifier of god john 15 26 he, he, he testifies to god in our life he testifies to god in our life he reveals god to us that is why you know the bible says if you have the spirit the spirit cannot say god be a cost so when you see any man that is causing God, he's not the Holy Spirit that is in him. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? He testifies to God in our lives. Number five, he's a convictor. John 16, 17. He convicts us of sin, of righteousness and judgment. He works inside us to show us what is right and what is wrong. If we will allow him. He's our guide. John 16, verse 13. He guides us into the way of peace. John 16, verse 13. He's our guide. That's one thing we're emphasizing this month. Spiritual words, guidance. Ask him to lead you. How be when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into what? All truth. He will guide you. There are secrets of banking. He will guide you into it. There are secrets of success in ministry. He will guide you into it. There are secrets of success in marriage. He will guide you into it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are here because we've been guided. He will show you. He said, This is the way of walking it. The Bible says, You will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way of what? Walking it. That's the job of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So, every day we wake up, ask Him to guide you, ask Him to shepherd you. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If you ask Him to guide you, you will not want. You are not going to want from now on in Jesus' name. Number seven, he is a communicator of the Godhead, the Father, Son. John chapter 16, verse 13. He, he shows us the Father. He said, Whatever he hears, he said, He shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear of the Father, he will show to us. Whenever the Holy Spirit is speaking, he's not speaking of himself, he's speaking what the Godhead is saying. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Hello, is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So if you want to know what God is saying in your life, listen to the Holy Spirit on a daily basis, on every matter. Number eight, he is the revealer of the future. John 16 verse 13b. 
the Bible says that he will show us things to come oh I've experienced this I've seen things ahead and I've acted ahead on many occasions and avoided trouble he's a revealer of the future you want to know the future of that business ask him tell you about ask him ask him he will show you the, 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 the future of that business the future of that ministry the future of that marriage so that you can take the right decision if you're hearing me Sam I'm hearing you that came to this country that was the time you know at the time of Abacha and he had gotten everybody on his side the political parties the traditional rulers and then to me he was going to rule the country I was in a church service I'll never forget in an Anglican church in those days and I heard from the Holy Spirit this man will not rule this country I said how is it possible I said he all the five political parties have endorsed him all the traditional rulers have endorsed him. He said, You know, I will take him out of the way. I don't understand what he meant. But a few days later, on a Friday evening, do you remember that day? I remember the day I was washing my clothes. And I started hearing by the Spirit the discussion of people in a compound that was two, two houses away. There's a way that compound is the that house that so I could see people on what I was hearing what they were saying. They talk about telepathy. The Bible says Jesus used to hear the thoughts of people. I hear sometimes. And they were discussing that Abacha has died. I say it's not possible. I say it's a rumor like the one he rumored before. I like had a different cancer. And the Holy Spirit said, Well, put on the television. You hear what they are saying. I put on the television. They are now spent on his life. I will show it. I say, Okay. The other man is going to rule, and he said, You know, I was also taking outside. He said, What? She let go in, I was taking people out of the way. And if you remember history, the other man died exactly one month. Do you remember? One month after that. I know things by the Spirit. For you too, you can know things. I hear what I'm saying. They bring a businessman for you. You don't just jump in. Go and pray. Tell them, Go and pray. The man that wrote him, the title of that book is God knows my business. Like I say he has never lost a dime in business. Why? No matter how beautiful the proposal is, he would take it into the closet. He would say, Give me at least two days. We wait on the Lord. And he will see the end of that business. And he will come out and make a decision. It's never in the world. Why do you make this thing most times? You are always what? You want to please somebody. But when your money is gone, money and you disappear before eh? with your hands the club and of you need MMM and the other things get help and be helped Start listening to God so you can stop losing money. Number nine, He is the multiplier of whatever you are doing. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. He is the multiplier of whatever you are doing. When He comes on your business, He multiplies it. He multiplies business, he multiplies ministries, he multiplies finances. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of God and in the comfort of what? The Holy Ghost. What happened to them? They were what? Multiplied. When you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, to lead you, the result is increase. This year you will have increase in the name of Jesus. So stop rushing out in a hurry. Stay and get direction. 
stop jumping into things to please people. Amen. Listen for direction. Tell them about listen for direction. A particular pastor talked to me about a certain investment. You know, those days you are doing MMM. I didn't lose any money there. But I lost money in something else. And it was a pastor. And he respected what he said. He said to me, put this one. I carried my two salary and put inside this. And for the day I put my salary this and I'm upgrading. And they were asking me to pay people. I was doing CBL work, paying people and upgrading. And I never got in time. But when I called the guy, I said, What is this thing now? They are upgrading. I called them now. He said, No, I don't even know them all. Uh, as, you, as, as you are seeing it, that's how I'm seeing it. Tap your neighbor, say, Stop pleasing men. Oh. Start following God. Oh. The other one, I didn't lose money because I followed God. Always gave me the plan. Go in, here, yeah, go out this place. I went in and I went out. Then I now went in the flesh. And that day was during 31st December. Oh. Crossover night. Oh. People were inside the hall. Oh. No, 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 not transfer. Tell your neighbor be praying when others are praying. <laughs> because if I had waited till the next day, maybe as you, I would have changed my mind and saved my money. They are laughing at me. You know we're in the same club where it has happened to all of us. So before you take any business decision, talk to God. Tell him about talk to God. Make an informed decision. Finally, he is the supplier of rivers of living water. John chapter 7 verse 37. When we get born again, the Holy Spirit comes inside us and becomes a well welling up to eternal life. When we get filled with the Holy Spirit, He comes upon us and overflows us with His power. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? The first one was power to run your daily life. But this second one now is power to be a witness, to witness to people, to talk to people about God, to bring people healing, to bring people it's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So say the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's the third work he does in our life. It's the work of what? Baptism. He baptizes us with his power. He fills us with his power and with his presence, with the evidence of speaking words in other tongues. But beyond baptism, he wants to, because some of you are already baptized, Spirit, you now speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit, beyond that, wants to fill you daily with the Spirit, fill you daily with living water. I get it. Man. He wants to fill you daily with His anointing. God wants to put a new anointing upon your life every day. Tell your neighbor, God wants to put a new anointing upon your life every day. That anointing will open your eyes to see. It will open your ears to hear. Is somebody hearing me? It will open your heart to understand the right things that you need to do. John 7, 37. On the last day of the feast, on that great day, Jesus said, If anybody want first, let him come to me and want and drink. Verse 38. Verse 38. Can we read it together? I want to go. He that believed on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. So what does the Holy Spirit do when you come and drink? When you come and how where do you drink? In your prayer closet, every day spend time in prayer. And drink fresh waters, fresh anointing. Fresh anointing carrying wisdom, fresh anointing carrying favor, fresh anointing carrying power. As you pray, you are drinking. 
the longer you pray the longer you are drinking the more you are drinking is somebody hear what i'm saying as you worship you are drinking these are ways to drink as you fellowship you commune with him you talk with him you fellowship with him you are drinking living water because he's this he's the source of water the spring of water living water as you worship with brethren you are drinking
that place is not talking about what you are learning. If there are things about your life he will teach you about, he will instruct you. Those things are not in Bible, it's not in Matthew, it's not in Luke. Okay, show me where Matthew where it says to brush your teeth. Show me. Show me in, in the book of Luke where it shows how to use Roland. See your Bible. That's the one he would the anointing of the Holy Spirit will what? Teach you. Okay, show me in the Bible where it talks about how to how to love your husband. That or that love, you know the love that happens in the other. Is it your Bible? Hello. Is it your Bible? It's not your Bible. You say, Pastor, that's why I'm getting blue movie and blue book. We don't need any blue movie and blue book. We need the Holy Spirit. Someone say the Holy Spirit. He is the originator of marriage. Who teaches the dogs about sex? Who teaches the goats about sex? of marriage he teaches them and guess what he's even the one that delivers them when the pregnancy comes delivers the baby have you ever seen, go to the you go to your village have you seen it going for Tinata? or being delivered it's the holy spirit so he knows everything about that marriage somebody hear what i'm saying just ask him try me ask him Everybody say the amen. He'll tell you. So he guides you in every area of life. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? But there are areas you need to come to church. There are things you don't learn in your house. So it will be taught in church. That's why you must be part of a local assembly. But there's another baptism that is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So said the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It means being filled with this power. When you get born again, the power in the there's a little power inside you. It's called a well. It's for you to cook your food, you know, live as a Christian. But now, to be able to help people, he supplies rivers. Somebody say rivers. Rivers of living water to flow out of you. But first, he needs to fill you so that the rivers can flow. And everybody say amen. And this infilling is manifested with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Jesus talked about this in Philip in John 7 39 37 to 39 in Luke 24 verse 29 in Luke 24 verse 41 to 43 Joel he said tarry you in Jerusalem till you are in Jew with power from on high Joel talked about it too in Joel chapter 2 verse 20, 20 28 to, to, to 32 he said you shall receive uh, uh, he said I will pour my spirit upon all flesh and in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 it came to pass they came a sound like a mighty rushing wind and they filled the whole house where they were and Paul Peter confirmed it in second um, Acts chapter 2 verse 14 to 21 he said this is that somebody said this is that this is what God promised this is what God promised the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to enable us to live supernaturally and be effective witnesses of Christ and in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 Jesus said but you shall receive power dunamis when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria to the uttermost parts of the earth the baptism of the Holy Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness and all of Judea and all of Samaria and all of Jerusalem Today, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is driving people because when that power comes on you, it will reveal to you God's plan for your life and it will drive you into your purpose. If somebody hear me, if you're hearing me, Sam, so hearing you. When this witnessing is complete, the end will come. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, it says, You know, this gospel shall what be preached to the ends of the earth as a witness, and the end will come. So, the purpose of this power is to help us to live supernaturally to activate the gifts of the spirit to witness boldly and powerfully and to win the whole world for christ he is to help us live supernaturally one to it when it comes when the baptism of the holy spirit comes on you it comes with gift things gift of word of knowledge word of wisdom tongues and interpretation gift of prophecy is somebody hearing what i'm saying if you're hearing some hearing 
boldness. These are things that have worked with a few words, but they get boldness to preach the gospel. And if they get the anointing, the power to win the lost, to heal the sick, to set free the oppressed, what happens when people are filled with the Holy Spirit? I'll begin to wrap up with this. The Holy Spirit overwhelms them with His presence. They begin to feel His presence. Our sister says she could not feel herself she was knocked out for some time she felt the presence she was drowned in it so you feel it like heat you may feel it like cold you may feel it like a blanket you can feel it like a wind number two when we are filled with we get filled with the power of god power to heal power to deliver power to save you begin to see results when you pray when you pray for things and when you pray for people Number three, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we receive some things. One of them is tongues, the gift of tongues. What is tongues? A new prayer language to help you pray better. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? If you're hearing, say I'm hearing you. So your prayer life becomes better. Tongues is not the language you know, it's a language you don't know. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Number two, we receive gifts of the Spirit. In one of the places that we are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible said the people began to prophesy. So when people get filled with the Holy Spirit, they receive gifts of healing, tongues and interpretation, different gifts of the Spirit. When they get filled with the Holy Spirit, oh, there was a lady that we prayed for. She said she died for many years. You see, when you don't have knowledge, you wait forever. She was not filled with the Holy Spirit for many years. She had been a Christian for many years. She's waiting for the Holy Spirit. And she's back in it, yeah. He has come since he's around you. You don't need to wait for him. So that night, I'll never forget it was 2 a.m. We just finished night class. I and my friend called her into the office. Open this thing to her about how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we laid hands on her and I saw that thing that happened in Acts chapter 10. She began to speak in tongues and prophesy. She started prophesying to patients. Prophesying to patients. I was like, wow. I want to experience it. I say, I've seen people get filled and fall down, get filled and shout. I've never seen people get filled and prophesy. She was prophesying. So many of you, when you get filled with you receive gifts. But the problem, you don't know they are there. That's why Paul said, stare up. Somebody says, stare up. The gifts you have received by laying on of my hands. Anytime you get filled with you have received some gifts. As you pray in tongues, they are stared up. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? If you're hearing me, Sam, here, you know. What of knowledge, what of wisdom, thoughts and interpretation, gifts of healing, working on miracles. The day you go through always you receive one or two or three of them. You have to start stepping out with them in the name of Jesus. Many people receive special anointings for ministry. At the same time Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit, he received anointing for ministry. Some receive prophecy. Some receive boldness. The book of Acts chapter 4, the Bible says that everywhere they were was shaking. Acts chapter 4, verse 29 to 33, everywhere was shaking and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they went and preached the word of God with boldness. People received joy. That's why you see them laughing like crazy. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. They were talking and laughing. They said, These guys are drunk. Paul said, No, these people are not drunk. Bar has not opened. It's just 9 a.m. And guess what? Do you know that some people receive salvation at the same time with Holy Ghost baptism? In the book of Acts, the Bible says, while Peter was still preaching, Acts chapter 10, you can put it up. The people were filled with what? As he was preaching this, he accepted Christ and immediately were filled with Holy Spirit. I've seen it happen sometimes. Sometimes he's an unbeliever. You are still trying to talk to him and he starts speaking not a fake dog somewhere in your cell because God is not a religious God. The person who opened this heart to God, the Holy Ghost came in and then the Holy Ghost came upon them. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? If you're hearing, say I'm hearing. Look at it. While he yet speak this word, Acts chapter 10, verse 44, the Holy Ghost fell on all those that heard the word. Praise the Lord. And someone has received deliverance. I've seen a lot of people receive deliverance and the Holy Ghost baptism. Demons start screaming and leaving. Because when the Holy Ghost comes, the presence of God is the absence of what? Demons. Today, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you need to ask Him to come and fill your life with His power, with His power.
presence. And when he fuels you, you will sense something inside you. Thank God for our sister. Like a spring, a well. I hear what I'm saying. Like rivers wanting to flow out of you. You sense it bubbling inside you. You're going to begin to hear some words in another language. The Bible says in the book of Acts that when they spoke in tongues, people from different nations heard them. Because there are different types of tongues. There's tongues of men. There's tongues of angels. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? There is tongues of men. There's tongues. Haven't you noticed how we minister sometimes when speaking? Shata, Kasa, Shala. There's tongues of angels. We are giving them instruction. But there's also tongues of men. They said the men of God went to a particular program somewhere. And when the anointing came on him, he started speaking in tongues. After the meeting, a woman came and greeted him in German. He was looking at the lady. The lady greeted him again in German. He was looking at the lady. The lady said, Boy, you, you were that pulpit, you were talking to me in my language. That is which language? I was speaking in tongues. He said, No, you are speaking German. She was shocked. Paul Brown said that his father was a missionary in Egypt. That when the Holy Ghost came upon those Bedouins, those Arab, they spoke perfect English as if they were professors. And I have seen people in the mission field use this thing. They ask God to help them to speak the language of that nation supernaturally. And when the Holy Ghost comes up, then they can speak the language of the supernatural. It's been because what did not go to school. When they are not in cover, he speaks like an English professor. Somebody shout hallelujah. There was a lady called Holy and she could not read. But she asked that the Holy Spirit will help her read. When the Holy Spirit comes on her, she can read. People did not believe it. She can read a Bible. So they brought her one day a newspaper. They said, You are deceiving us. She picked the newspaper. She could not read it. Because her prayer was to read a Bible. And what did they say? Then he, 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 she, they brought that newspaper. She wrote to say, I can read only one word. This is the one is the Lord. One of the Lords. You know, you can Lord, may, may your son. And they say, This is your Lord. But it does not touch me like my Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. So one of the things that come to food is they receive a real that in that tongue is a real language. There is a place you go, is the language you are speaking. That's why as you grow in the spirit, sometimes you switch languages. Like me, I speak a lot of languages and dialects in the spirit. I have tongues that I speak that are like Chinese. They, those tongues when they come with creating miracles. I have tongues that I speak that I used to speak to nations. Over the years, I've been able to now study those things. And see. But most that when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you won't just blow it into a full language. It will start as a syllabus. Mama, Papa, Kak. That's what we call it in Mexico. That's how baby start talking to you. If your little brother, you know, for the first time, just hope you are your little baby. Let me just speak it for the first time. At maybe one year, six months or something. I said, Mommy, get him. How are you? Where's daddy? Imam Baposo. Imam Baposo. Your head will be hitting your leg. Your head. So, all truths are parallel. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you start with what? Mama. Papa, Kaka. That is why you be you hear them Rabba Santa, Rabba Santa, Rabba Santa. That's how I started. I went to the Lord and said, This Rabba Santa is a good morning, good afternoon, or good night. Every time Rabba Santa, Rabba Santa. Good day, we have a day, Rabba Santa, Rabba Santa. Yeah, or good morning, or good afternoon, or good night. <laughs> and so, yeah, if God is to get tired of me, we should be tired of me by now. I'm not the practical. I'm the very practical. For instance, the time I got filled with the Holy I didn't fall under the power, I didn't fall anything. Everybody was falling, I didn't fall. But those days, oh, the money, oh, my house was coming up. You see, oh, the man just for the men, if I But thank God they say, you must not fall. But that you are going to say something inside you. Speaking by faith, so I say it's by faith. I say they spoke in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Spirit will give you the words. It's you that will do what? Speak. He will collect your mouth and start doing it. Like example. That one is a It's epilepsy. He will give you the word. It's you that will do the speaking. Any other thing is a 
nobody hearing what I'm saying. Because that's why many of you are not, are not speaking in tongues. Some of you already feel the Holy Spirit, but they didn't teach you well. So he told me, you will hear the words inside you, or you will feel a rumbling inside you. Something wanted to come out. You see, I like this girl. She's very expressive. Are you? You see, it's as if she wants to throw off. And she opened her mouth. <laughs> so open your mouth and speak it. They spoke. Someone said they spoke. Can you guys put it up in media? Acts chapter 2. As the Spirit gave them what? Utterance. Utterance means He supplies the words. Are you getting me? It's your job to do what? To speak them out. So open your mouth and allow Him to speak through you. And that will be the beginning of a glorious life of prayer, of fellowship, of direction. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? Because tongues is the door into the supernatural. Once you start speaking in tongues, you will enter the world. You can enter the realm of visions through speaking in tongues. You can enter the realm of healing, the realm of miracles, the realm of wisdom, the realm of angelic encounters. If you have not filled the Holy Spirit, or you are you don't speak in tongues, you don't spend that you are helping yourself. You are missing. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? If you're hearing Sam here, you know. Driving his prey under his breath. 
hear me, Sam, hear me, no. Tell your neighbor, this year, I will spend time praying in tongues. I will not live a normal life. I will live a supernatural life. Should I give you one key for conquering this year? Pastor started singing it last year. Pray more in what? In tongues. Because he that prayer in tongues, he edifies himself. First Corinthians 14. He built up himself as if he's building up a house. He charges himself like a battery. He that speaketh in tongues, speaketh to God. How be it? He speaketh the truth in a mystery. What does it mean? In a mysterious way, you pray to God. In a mysterious way, you get answers to your problems when you speak in tongues. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? So the more you speak, the more problems will be solved for you. And everybody said a mighty amen. amen. How can you receive the Holy Ghost sovereignly? By the move of God. Some people have received it in their house just asking God. Like the day of Pentecost. Sovereignly in a church service. But another way you can receive, like in Acts chapter 8, is by laying on of what? Hands. Peter and John came and laid hands in the people in Samaria that they might be filled with what? The Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 10, uh, in Acts chapter 10, the Holy Spirit fell sovereignly again. But in Acts chapter 19, Paul prayed for about 12 um, disciples of John and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then in Acts chapter 19, Paul himself was filled what, with the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 9, Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit by the laying on of hands of Aeneas. And guess, guess what? He was not only filled with the Holy Spirit, he got healing, he received his sight, he received his commission. You see, so many things can happen when you get filled with the Holy Spirit at the same time. And everybody said amen but all these things starts with saying Jesus come into my life be my Lord be my Savior that's where everything starts stand on your feet we took some time today because it's very very important these things are simple but they are vital someone say they are vital they are important can you just begin to thank God for the ministry of the Holy Spirit? He is our comforter. He has been sent to go with us. He has been sent to direct us. Just thank the Lord for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Just thank Him. Now, can you say to the Holy Spirit, come and be my friend. Come and direct me. Come and comfort me. Come and counsel me. From today, I will not go out without you anymore. If you're here, you're not born again. You've not given your life to Christ. You see all these things.